Who exactly is Shamim Nabuma Kalisa? Shamim is a 24-year-old breast cancer survivor, social entrepreneur, motivation speaker and female entrepreneurship advocate. Shamim Nabuma is the president and chief executive officer of Chill Eye Lab Group of Companies, which are technology-driven companies in telehealth, agritech, fintech, and drone services. Her love for technologies and inventing female-favoring innovation has not gone unseen by both national and international players. In early 2020, Nabuma Shamim was named Forbes Africa 30 under 30 and was the first young Ugander below 30 years to appear in the Forbes cover photo. In 2019, Shamim received an honorable mention during Matai Impact Awards. In the same year, 2019, Google for Startup identified and named her among the leading CEO in machine learning guided companies to take part in the Google Pitch Drive to Asia. At the end of 2019, the United Nations also chose Nabuma to speak about the price of embracing local innovation in achieving SDGs during the TICAD7 event in Japan. Takeda Foundation Japan also came to know about her work in Africa and awarded her with the Takeda Young Entrepreneur Award 2018. Regional University Forum in partnership with Mastercard also recognized Shamim Zil with a Young African Entrepreneurship Award 2018. Other awards and prizes won by Shamim include the Social Impact Award 2018 by Awif Tony Elumelu Entrepreneurship Grant 2018. Shamim, who locals refer to as Mama Cancer, is the first lady covered in this Miracle vs. Expected series. How did she make that in a very short time? especially at the age of 24. Can you do the same thing? The answers are coming straight to you in this episode of Miracle vs. Expected. Other episodes will be linked in the description box below and in the cards above. Miracle vs. Expected is an original YouTube series where we analyze young self-made millionaires and extraordinary achievers. We give our take on how much of the success was due to hard work or pure luck. We also check how viable the industry which made the millionaire most of the money is and how profitable it would be for you if you joined that industry today. If you're in love with this kind of content, just type Miracle vs. Expected in the comment section and drop the names of all the self-made millionaires you would love us to analyze their success and we will feature one of the millionaires mentioned in the next episode of this series. If you're new here on this channel, we discuss everything business and finance related, how to make money online, we review businesses, websites, apps, and finally, we discuss a little about investing and personal finance. So, if all that sounds good to you, then go ahead and smash that red subscribe button and notification bell so that you will be informed anytime we put out a new video. So, with that out of the way, let us get into the video. Background Shamim Nabuma Kalisa grew up in a poor family in rural Uganda where she and her family could not afford private medical care. They depended on public medical services which were not only inefficient but also required them to travel over 70 kilometers from their home to get access to medical care. The services were very poor and the facility was only equipped to handle a few simple cases. Her first meeting with cancer came as early as age 13 when her mother took ill and eventually passed away from cervical cancer. Little did she know that many years down the line, she would also be diagnosed with cancer. These personal experiences inspired her to seek ways to extend medical services to those who need them but are not able to afford or assess them. She founded a company in 2017 to offer mobile cancer screening, which later incorporated the use of artificial intelligence, guided e-oncology services to detect cervical and breast cancer. Today, her company also incorporates drone services for easy transportation of cervical cancer specimens. 
from the rural areas to laboratories without women having to travel long distances out of the villages. The company can now boast of over $300,000 in annual revenue. In the wake of the global COVID-19 pandemic, she and her team developed a chatbot to automate consulting to communities in Uganda, South Sudan and Democratic Republic of Congo. Meanwhile, if you're getting value from this video, don't forget to smash the like button. It means a lot to this video and channel in the eye of the YouTube algorithm. Education and Career Nabuma Shamim Kalisa, as already mentioned, is a 24-year-old cancer survivor. She's currently having medical training education at Makarere University, Kampala Central, Uganda, which is one of the oldest and most prestigious universities in Africa. She is more a social entrepreneur and an innovator in the field of medicine. Now, with technology as her backbone, her company offers cancer diagnosis system, true cervical and breast cancer testing kits and support with cancer treatment using a proprietary system that offers e-oncology services like consultation, test results interpretation through a mobile app called Keti Eye App. Her customer base has grown from 130 in Kampala to 150,000 globally. Because she embraced technology as an enabler, she changed from an offline company offering manual services to a fully digital one, offering online services powered by artificial intelligence. They now have 21 employees who serve over 150,000 women across 25 countries. Do you think background played the greatest role in his success? Some may just say Kalisa is really hardworking, but what do you think? Is she just lucky, brilliant or visionary? We want to know your thoughts. Moving on, let's take a brief look at her work ethic. In 2016, she had used her little savings from her student post to start a small mobile clinic, but it was so major and she had no one else to support that dream. She tried to secure funding from several sources, but they all wanted an investable company, one with a certain minimum revenue generated already. She didn't have any of those and so she met with a brick wall each time. Then she heard about the Tony Elumelu Foundation while watching TV one day. She applied and was so excited when TEF decided to take a chance on her. With the seed capital she received, she was able to transform the small clinic she had to a company which today serves more than 155,000 women. Being a woman in a male-dominated industry has been very challenging for Kalista. When she expanded her business to one that uses artificial intelligence, she entered a market dominated by men and when they hear that a young woman, an African at that is making the strides that she is making, it seems all made up to them. Now, she has opened offices in other countries and have investors showing keen interest. So, I guess the takeaway is, irrespective of your field, if you are dodgingly determined to solve a problem for humanity, then you are more likely to be financially successful unlike others in your field who are not visionary like you. Viability of artificial intelligence in medical industry Without wasting any of your precious time, let us look at the performance of AI in medical industry. I am convinced recent advances in AI systems in medicine and healthcare present extraordinary opportunities, particularly in areas of such deep social interest as oncology, with significant questions and drawbacks calling for a close consideration of their implementation and how they affect and can even change basic definitions in the medical context. The good news remains that there are great opportunities for medical personnel to explore AI as it helps to digitize and unify medical data. There are fortunes to make using AI in medical industry if you know your onions as it could be used to diagnose disease, develop drug faster, use in personalized treatment and improve gene editing. 
Overall, I think diligence, perseverance, and great wish to solve a health problem for humanity played a vital role to Shamim's extraordinary feat. She is still 24 and a student. What do you think played a larger role? Luck or hard work? Let us know in the comment section below. Also, drop names of other entrepreneurs you want us to cover their stories and we would feature them in future episodes. See you guys in the next video. Cheers!